What's happening, people? Welcome to this episode of Everything 9000. What's happening, Amrit? How you doing? Yeah, we're going to be talking about Kylian, Kylian Mbappe today. Uh, you know, jeez, <laughs> man is balling. 127 million signing on bonus fee and a million pounds a week. He's just signed a three-year contract. And that's after tax, you know, a million pounds a week. That's after tax. It's after tax. Right. So okay, well, he's just signed a three-year Rose contract. Pays much with higher than that. So PSG, Paris Saint-Germain, the club he was with. Last summer, there was a whole saga, you know, one year left on his contract. Real Madrid submitted a, uh, an offer to buy him for 170 million, I think it was euros, um, yeah. maybe pounds. Um, that was rejected. And, you know, at the time, it was a big sort of thing. Because, you know, Real Madrid, they, you know, Sergio, well, Perez, the owner of Real Madrid, he's very cutthroat. Mm. He's like a Daniel Levy. He's a yeah. shrewd businessman. It's like when he's got his eye on a player, he wants that player. So last summer this happened. Um, mm. PSG said no. Didn't kind of didn't let him go. At that time, Mbappe said, look, I'll be coming to Madrid. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, he said he'll be coming to Madrid. Don't worry. And OK, Real Madrid were probably weighing up the um, pros and cons. They were like, OK, we can get him on a free next mm. summer then. You know, we don't have to pay anything for him. Then, lo and behold, this summer comes. And <laughs> he's just had a U-turn, and you've got some strong thoughts about that. Well, first of all, look, I'm no fan of Real Madrid. Okay, yeah, they, as you said, their president has been cutthroat, and they've been going off and signing players that will, you know, they would happily do that to another club. But let's start, you know, let, you know, uh, to begin with, like you know, that La Liga have kicked up arms and stuff, and Real Madrid is saying, look, this is unethical, this is what's happening, and so on. But they would hundred percent do that. If they had, if they could possibly, but what this deal has kind of showed us is that it it kind of encapsulates everything that is like wrong with football, right? It's it's just so much money, it's ludicrous. You have like, how are PSG even affording this without breaking financial fair play rules? They are, of course, they're breaking them. So uh, there was that statement released by La Liga, wasn't there? Yeah, and, and they accused PSG of saying they had, you know, seven hundred million of losses, etc. Exactly, but then, you know, like so, a lot of the time, so a lot of clubs have been given leeway, like a lot of Premier League clubs, like all of the clubs have been given leeway with the with the financial fair play rules. Well, because financial of, fair play is just a fact. no because because of like you know the COVID and stuff. And uh, so, you you know, you've got like uh, Leeds and Burnley complaining that Everton, you know, have broken rules. And uh, there's been loads of other clubs that have kind of uh, incurred losses, but because they've been allowed to do that this year because of uh, COVID, so they've made, they can make some allowances for COVID. But even when you factor that in, how PSG are getting away with this much money, you give, you, that's 100 million, you know, first of all, uh, that's like an outlay there. And then on top of that, they've got like a, a huge wage bill, a huge and they're just adding to it as well, like it's nothing. they've got Messi and Neymar. Neymar, Messi, job. and not even that, but they've got like Genie Wijnaldum or like probably like 250, 300 as well. Like, you know, he's just a fringe player for them. You know, when, when Genie went, the main reason Genie went was because That's of the money. money. Yeah, so, money. you know, so he, he wasn't going to be getting like, he was not on like 100K or something. He's, he's on there at least 200, 300. Well, you know, the argument a lot of people have had, a bit like what you're saying is, you know, football should have organic growth. And, you know, what's happened is, Obviously, in Chelsea, a Russian oligarch came in. This, this is the, the problem. You, when you, you have a whole you have, state... Then you have a whole state, a consortium come in, and they've just pumped oil money in. It's not even just a whole consortium. It's just like a whole state. It's, it's their foreign fund that they have, and they've invested this money into it to kind of wash their own image. And what they're doing in the meantime as well, like, yeah, fans of that particular club love it because there's money being pumped into that club. Like, look at Newcastle, for example. You know, nobody, nobody in Newcastle wants to hear anything about MBS and the, you know, the human rights abuses that he's done and like, you know, and all of that stuff. Nobody cares about that because literally their club was in trouble and all of a sudden they've got this influx of cash and they think other fans are saying all these things because they're jealous. I had like a bit of an argument with somebody. I remember a Newcastle fan when, uh, when this happened with Newcastle. But now if you look at, have you seen what Newcastle are doing? Have you seen the Newcastle third away kit? It's basically uh, the replica of the Saudi Arabian home kit. Right. And it's got like, you know, it's got like green borders, like white shirt, green borders and stuff. And like the ba- badges in green as well. It's just sports washing. And that's what PSG are doing. Like PSG is mental. Like that's why we can't actually have a whole state just owning a football club. Yeah. Because they do what Manchester City do. They do what PSG do and all these teams. Even Man City, for you know, take example. Like they drop 100 million here, 60 million here, 70 million here for like every season for a joke. For a player they don't even need. Like Jack Grealish, a hundred million pounds, right? You tell me, well, how how much have they used Jack Grealish? He's just a cheerleader of the team. But anyway, you know, 
a lot of people are saying that this is sort of killing, you know, the future of football. It is. I.e. basically, you know, we're overinflating players' values. Mm -hmm. And what happens is other clubs will be like, well, why are we not spending this money? Exactly. And what will happen is they'll either spend that money and then be in financial trouble or they'll just, you know, keep going in, down this unsustainable route. It, it is unsustainable because, like, you know, the, so look, the implications that these have is, like, it goes further down the line, as you say now. For example, if, if Liverpool, Man City, United... I wouldn't say Liverpool, actually, because Liverpool don't do this. Liverpool so like, have spent a lot of money. They have spent a lot of money, but they've spent money they could million. afford. Like, what? Nine hundred million million in the last seven years. In the last seven years. Yeah, that's that's over the last Close seven years. a billion years. in seven years. Still a lot of money. It's still a lot of money, but we've sold players as well in that time. And I'm just saying. Yeah, okay. Just saying. Which players have United sold Man City? So let's, let's not get into this argument, yeah, because we'll be here forever, okay, yeah? But the impl- implications these uh, things have is inflates the market, as you say. Okay, but what, why, why, why do you have a problem with Mbappe? You said to me, off air, Mbappe is the biggest snake in football. Oh, he is. He, look, he's 21 years old right yeah. 23, isn't he? No, he's like 21. Oh no, 23, my bad. He's 23, yeah. He's, yeah, 23. 23. He's 23. And like, your heart, look, Mbappe's heart is at, not at PSG, right? You know that, we know that, because he's said it himself, his heart is at Real Madrid. That's where he wanted to go. That's the team he dreamt of playing for. You know, everybody's seen that photo of him in his room with, you know, like a Real Madrid top and has Ronaldo posters all around him, right? So his heart, his childhood dream is to play for Real Madrid. And... He was so set on it, but he's been turned by money and 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 the power they they they. If offer someone him. offers you a million pound a week after tax and one hundred twenty seven million pounds, look, you wouldn't take that. I wouldn't because if my dream is to play for Real Madrid and Real Madrid are going to give me like five hundred six. I think it's 000. difficult to say when you're not in that situation. No, it, uh, of course it is, but how much? Don't more? forget, now you're what you're a lot older than twenty three. Not a lot older, but you're yeah. older than twenty three. Yeah. When you were twenty three, you were nowhere near as mature. I can vouch for that. No. I knew you when you were 23 and you could be turned by that money. You could be turned by that money, but what, why? What's the, like, look, I think this is a bit like, remember? There oh. are other factors. You know, he himself said, I wanted to continue playing with Messi. That's no, that no, bollocks. No, no. I, don't, I do not for one second believe that he wanted to carry on playing with Messi. That's absolute bollocks. Why? He's just saying it. The, one of the greatest players of all time. He is one of the greatest, but, but Mbappe doesn't give a shit about that. that from Mbappe to say that, it's... it's Let's, let's not get into that. That's utter bollocks. Well, obviously, PSG really went out of the way. They've offered, you know... He's Mbappe. the head of the sporting project or something like that, right? Yeah, so, so he has he has the literally the power to hire and fire staff. And coaches, yeah, and so on. And that, then, and that then is improved transfers. Bad. Approved transfers. L- approved literally, transfers. what PSG have done... And, and you know what? They're not even signing for like a six-year contract, seven-year contract. It's a three-year contract. Three-year contract. So what Mbappe has done is basically bent over PSG. And that's what PSG have done themselves, actually. They've just bent over him, you know, before him. And, like, they're just so set on keeping him. Well, why? You have a player who clearly doesn't want to be there. And, and, to, be offering... honest, and to be honest, he's not, you know, he's one of the best young talents out there. Mm. But he's still a talent, right? He's still a talent. He's not, 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 not a proven talent. You know, do you, th- okay, look, do you think while he's at PSG, he will win the Ballon d'Or? Well, you know, a good question. Well, look, let me put, put this situation to you. If he wins PSG their first Champions League, is that not a bigger achievement than winning another one at Real Madrid? It could be, but what are the chances of them winning a the Champions League? Well, Look, you know they've got Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe. You could they, never. They had the best. You could never rule that. No, out. no, no. You can't. You can because that team. If you look at you know what Pochettino is trying to do there as well. Pochettino is a great manager, but no manager can go in and manage that team. Like how many people have tried? Like Tuchel. Brilliant manager, couldn't get him the Champions Tuchel League. Tuchel said he felt like the sports minister when he was there. Exactly, he was right? Like, it's, it's tough managing. It's that. tough. It, it's tough. Like you got, look, you've got Sergio Ramos, you've got Messi, you've got Neymar, you've got Mbappe, you've got all these... Dominant... But you think these players are true no, professionals. But they, they're not. It's, it's just a team full of egos. It's not even a team. It's just that like 11 individuals going out there playing football. Like, you know, other than like, you know, you see like Messi and Mbappe link up perhaps, you know, you know Messi and Neymar link up. If they up. win the Champions League in the next couple of years, will you eat your own words? Uh, no, because Mbappe, I, I still don't think what Mbappe did was right. Like, you know, when you think about it, you've given your word to somebody like, for okay, look, if you were like Mbappe signed a three year contract right now, okay, yeah. And uh, say you see out your contract and now you think, okay, I'm 26, I'm ready to move from Madrid now. Well, he, he said Would, that. He well, said the dream of Real Madrid for him, it's not dead. But, no, but as we know, for Sergio Perez, 
And a lot, of, a lot of the talk, Perez, yeah. Antonio yeah. Perez, a lot of the talks coming out of Real Madrid is that they will not go back there. If they go back, if they go back to Mbappe, honestly, they they ugh, they, I I would have I would lose any respect. They yeah for them. I don't have respect for Perez and like Real Madrid anyway. But like what I mean is that they would. I don't know how they could go back to that. As Mbappe, he could have possibly basically like put the last nail in his own uh, career. Like you know, uh, well. Who was going to sign him after that? And well, gonna... Mbappe actually, you know, he's there's been a lot of talks. You know, he's he's come out numerous times and said he loves Klopp, he loves Liverpool, and even recently again he said he Honestly, was considering I would, Liverpool. I, I'm so he said glad he loves Liverpool. No, he look. I'm so glad Liverpool never signed him. I actually am so glad Liverpool never signed him because he's that really? problematic. No, we have a team, okay, of players. We actually have a team who's together. Mbappe is the kind of guy who would break that. But he's a young ego. player. Surely someone like Klopp can manage that. Big no, ego. no, he, he's his ego's too big. So Klopp can't manage him. I don't know. Uh, Klopp would manage him, but like he, he's that kind of unnecessary. Like imagine Mbappe resigned him back when he was uh, before PSG, right? Yeah. And he's killing it in the league. We're winning things that we have been winning, and then he now wants like six hundred thousand pounds or seven thousand pounds a week. You know? Can you imagine the unrest that's going to cause? Look, Salah's been a problem. That's not even a million pounds a week. What he's getting, exactly. and that sounds ridiculous. I know, but then like Salah's being a problem at the moment, wanting obviously more money than. What and he's how much is Salah on? Just to get some perspective. I think Salah's on like maybe about 200, 250 maybe. I think because his contract was renewed like a few years ago, like about two, three years ago. His contract. Like, he signed a new, a week, yeah. yeah, so he signed a new contract a year after he after his first season. KDB's on about 300, 350 from what yeah. I know. He's the highest paid player. So highest imagine player. Mbappe in that Liverpool team demanding more money. Salah at the moment is being a problem anyway as well because he wants more money. Obviously, he Ronaldo thinks, was turned down more money at Juventus and that's why he eventually left. Mm. And if Ronaldo can be turned down money, you know, everyone's turning it. What is the hype around Mbappe? You know, Mbappe, Harlan. A lot of people are saying... Because of these decisions that the likes of Mbappe are taking, they will never reach the levels of Messi, Ronaldo. No, they won't. They won't. If you look at what what is he actually going to achieve winning the like? If you look at Mbappe's stats here in the French league, they're incredible. But they're in the French league, you know. They're in the French league, and uh, well, has he done it in Champions League? Not really. PSG keep getting knocked out. They've made it to one final, and again they couldn't win that. So what what is he going to prove? It's a bit. Do you remember Oscar from Chelsea? Mm. It's a bit like that. Isn't it? When he was at the peak of his career, playing for uh, Chelsea in game in, game out, playing for Brazil game in, game out, right? Yeah. I think in one year he played like 62, 65 games. So this is how much football he was getting. He was at the top of his game, his prime. And at that very moment, he decided to go to China. And have you heard of Oscar ever since? Yeah. Has he played for Brazil ever since? Yeah. yeah. And I remember he got some ridiculous wages. But what you need to remember, you know, player careers are really short. They're short, but look, look I, this is one thing I don't get. Like, how much money could you possibly need? Like, you do you really think if uh, Mbappe went to Madrid, he wouldn't have been paid well? He wouldn't have been able to sustain himself. He wouldn't have been able to get the financial freedom that to himself or to his family. So th- this, th- don't don't tell me this, all oh, players of short careers and stuff, okay, yeah? Because they'll always make money. Even after football, they'll make money. A player like Mbappe, you think Ronaldo retires tomorrow, right, yeah? Then he'll stop making money. He'll have no income. Ronaldo's a difference. No, 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 but Mbappe is on that level. Ronaldo right? is one of the few, sport, you know, billionaire <clears throat> sportsmen. No, 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 okay, but... In history. No, but what I'm trying to say is, like, you know, arguing this, okay, let the player, let Mbappe stay at PSG because he, he doesn't need that money. He's not going to be paid pennies at Real Madrid. He's going to be paid millions, hundreds of millions Well, there's, at Real well, well, there's reports coming out of And PSG if anything, now. he would have enriched himself even more because more, like, uh, brands and stuff would have associated with him because he plays for Real Madrid. That's like the pinnacle of any footballer's career. Right, look at all those sponsorship deals, which you already would get, mm. but they be uh, they be much more in. Well, there is, I think, Nike, Puma, etc. They're all trying to get his signature. Exactly, yeah. and imagine if he was at Real Madrid, the biggest club in the world, with the biggest player in the world. That's what he would have had. Yeah, well, there's there's reports coming out of PSG that you know I think Messi and others are a bit disgruntled. Of course, they're going to be disgruntled. You know, you look at Messi. Messi's the greatest. Like Messi's the biggest fish there is. Do you reckon he's being paid more than Messi? Oh, 100%. Yeah, of course he is. He's going to be the biggest earner there. So look, this is what I mean. You can't manage that team. You've got players who don't like each other because they're being paid more. This is a club where you come to get basically enrich yourself, where you can say, okay, I'm the highest paid. Okay, no. But then Neymar will be like, okay, no, I'm better than these two. I want to be the highest paid. And, you know, who, who, that's not a team, man. You know, at the end of the day, you forget what it is. It becomes like this. I don't know what it becomes, but it's not a football team. 
If you look at a football team, it's like a team like Liverpool that are together, man. Right. I well, want to say United, but what I'm trying to say is look, look at the difference, though. If you were like a manager, right? Who would you find? Who would you want to manage in that sense? A Liverpool team that's together, or a PSG team that's just full of like egos. Like you know, the 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 the, the next player wants to be paid more than the other player. Well, Real Madrid have done that. They've always been, you know that team of Galacticos, big egos, and they've won three Champions. No, League but they've, four they've, years. They're, they're, theirs has been a bit different. Like theirs. When they get Galacticos right, as you say, they've they've always got those players, but they actually go and win things. They go win the league, and it's a much tougher league than PSG. I'm pretty sure PSG are looking at that and saying, we can do that. I don't know. They've got no competition in their French league. Like No, I'm talking in the Champions League. No, no, but then yeah. Champions League, but they haven't done it, though. They've, they've, been doing, uh, they've been rich for a very long time they've, now. They've made, what, a couple of fi- final in the semi-final? No, they've, they've made... They're what? getting closer. They're getting closer, but see, are getting closer, but they're not going to get there yet, are they? You know? Right. So... Well, anyway, you know... I've got you on air now. I've got this video. When Mbappe's contract finishes in, you know, three years' time or when there's one year left on his contract and mm. he's got links to Liverpool and I'm going to hear you raving his Liverpool team, would never... Him. Under John Henry, let me tell you one thing. Under John Henry, we never, ever, ever will sign Mbappe right. because but John Henry will not fork out that kind of money. Let's just imagine a world where, you know, there's strong links to Liverpool. Mbappe wants to go there. He'll take a pay cut, whatever. He's earned his money. He really wants to prove himself now. Okay. Right. And, you know, if Liverpool... If he takes a pay cut, then I would take it. Oh, oh, are we changing our tune already? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. This video is proof where you've called him a snake... Mm-hmm. Where you said you will never take him, I would, I would not. No, I would. Right, right. But that's fine. Oh, I've by the way, the you know what? I, we forgot one thing while we're talking about Mbappe, like the impact this is gonna have. I feel really b- bad for Madrid. Well, I don't feel bad for Madrid, but Madrid have really, really fucked it up because what Man City did signing Haaland, they've missed out on Haaland because they called off their interest in Haaland because they thought, okay, Mbappe done deal. So they've missed out on Haaland and Mbappe, and yeah. they're a bit. You know, yeah, they're a lost, bit exposed. Lost to see now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are yeah. they going to sign now? Because they do, to be honest, they do need that striker. They can't rely on Benzema. Mm-hmm. Madrid fans, by the way, have been so salty. They've. Mm-hmm. Uh, Did you see what Modric came out and said as well? Modric, uh, no. so he was questioned ahead of the Champions League final whether he's going to sign a new contract. He says, yeah, he will, but he won't do. He won't be doing it. He said nothing signed yet, but he won't be doing an Mbappe. Oh, <laughs> and obviously, you know, Benzema. Was, has been like almost like courting Mbappe yeah. to join and when they join the French national team it could be a bit awkward but you know I just want to end this podcast I want to get some quick thoughts on the conclusion of the Premier League uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know nervy nervy last day title up for grabs um, with 25 minutes to go 25 mm-hmm. minutes to go City are 2-0 down they have to score three goals to win the league Liverpool had to score one more goal at home which looked pretty inevitable and you know they did end up scoring two more goals so Liverpool was always going to win their game at that point for me I genuinely thought Liverpool was going to take the league you're a massive Liverpool supporter what were your thoughts on what on what went down I was, you know what it was like at the had City like gone 3-0 up in the first 30 minutes I would have been fine with it I'd be like okay you know what it was inevitable that City playing Villa at home they were obviously going to win that game. Had this game been at the start of the season, City would have win that game like 6-7-0, possibly, right, yeah? Not even 6-7-0, but they would have comfortably won that game if it was at the start of the season, middle of the season, even a couple of games ago. It was nervy because, right? you know, it was every, the last time, game. every time the Man City fans were hearing of a Liverpool yeah. goal, that you could, we saw they were getting really disgruntled. Exactly. It was exactly. getting tense And in that not round. even just the, ma- the fans, I think the energy obviously went onto the pitch and players were nervous because they knew they had to that. win. Yeah. And Gerard, obviously, you know, normally what happens when they've got teams got nothing to play for, they, what they do is like, you know, they kind of like tend to fall off a little bit in the last game of the season, maybe the last couple of games. They don't want the players kind of like, you know, the intensity comes down a little bit because they've got nothing to play for, their league secured, whatever it is. Uh, with Gerard, he came up fired, like obviously all fired up. He wants Liverpool to win the league, and this is the one thing he could deliver for them again, right? And uh, when they were not 2-0 up, honestly, when they were not 2-0 up, I know the moment the first goal went in for City will be when it will be over. But watching Ollie Watkins miss those two chances, could it, like Villa could have been 4-0 up. If Villa were 4-0 up, there's no way City were coming Genuinely, back. City didn't look like scoring a goal. They didn't, but then, then they did. You know, and, and they scored three in five Gundogan minutes. Gundogan came on at 70 minutes and then five minutes later. Big call from Guardiola not bringing Jack Grealish on. You know, I, th- I think I remember hearing a pundit, I couldn't remember who it was, but he said, you know, 99 managers out of 100, I think it was Rio Ferdinand, mm. he said 99 managers out of 100 would have put Grealish on. 
No, but then all of a sudden the game did change because when he put Sterling on, he brought um, Gundogan yeah. on, right? You know, and so those two people did change the change the game. And when I think Aston Villa, they held on, they held on for seventy minutes, but then I think that extra twenty minutes was just too much for them, and that's what's frustrating because we were actually just twenty five minutes away from winning the league. If you, if you, again, like you know, and it's it's frustrating. One point in it. One point in it. And you'd got ninety two points. And we were, yeah, exactly. And and our biggest failure this season feels like, and uh, this is something that was pointed out at the end of the game as well. Like you know, Liverpool against the top four, we didn't win a single game against the top four. We drew all six against the top four. All the games that it, had we beaten Tottenham, that that was the one game where we were just like you know because I, when you look at the f- fixture list from like eight weeks ago, six weeks ago, right? Okay, we had Tottenham. That was a game we had to win. And when you looked at fixtures for Man City, there was one game, that, you know, West Ham. West Ham was, was going to be tricky for them. And uh, so I was hoping they would drop points, and they did. And then we ended up having to rely... We ended up having to hope that they drop points in two games rather than one, and that's what killed the season for us. That's what killed the league for us. And it was it was disappointing because we were so close. Again. Uh, but, I love uh, it. You know, I, I know I love you did. It. So, I, couldn't, I couldn't love it more. No, I know. I, as a Man City sport, you couldn't obviously. Yeah. I, I get that. I get that. I get that. No, it's, it's totally fine. <laughs> I think. I think the saving grace is you knowing that you've got a Champions League final playing this Saturday. But I think you know what players are tired, and I I don't feel too good about the final. Players are tired, and you know they would have been a bit deflated about the Premier League. The Premier League. Look, as I said, had City gone three 0 up in the first half an hour, nobody be doing upset. Okay, it would. It's the hope it, that kills you. It is the hope that kills you, man. It was the fact that we almost thought that we had it, and then we did. We were twenty five minutes for, for seventeen minutes. We thought we had it. Klopp's won one league in seven years. Is that good enough for you? A hundred percent, it is because the people say this. Okay, yeah. Look at what Klopp has built. Okay, he was that team going to win the Premier League in his first season, his second season, his third season? Tell me. The team that he inherited, never. It was never, ever going to win that. Pep Guardiola came in, that team was already built. Okay, he, he kept just kept on adding more, adding more. So he was straight away off to winning start. Okay, here we go. But Klopp, when Klopp came in, we had players like Lucas, or Lucas Lever was all right, but like we had players like Ben Teke, we had Barini, we had Ch- like Emery Chan was all right as well. But then we had like Jay Spearing and all these mans, like, uh, you know, like, there was no... We, who did we have in defence? We had Sacco in defence with... Uh, I don't even know who else we had. Skirtle. In. Skirtle. We had, like, no right-back. We had we had Nathaniel Klein right-back. I don't even know who our left-back was at that point. Jose Enrique. Maybe. No, it was uh, Moreno. Moreno. Yeah. And then we... I don't even know. We had many... Right, basically, you had a dead team. Yeah. We had the deadest team. So that team, obviously, was going to take three or four years to be built up. And the moment it's built up and we go right there now, it's just frustrating that City, has beat, uh, City are beating to us by one point. So what? So when people say Klopp's won one league in seven years, it's absolutely bollocks. It is, it is. It pisses me off. It's a fact. It's not a... F- we've won the champ. Why do you not... It's people say... It's okay, a fact. It's a fact. You've spent 900 same, million okay, in seven years. In the same years. time now, he's been... In, it's in a, the fa- it's okay, a fact. You've spent 900 million. He's been million. in three Champions League finals over five years. And you've won one. Four years, my bad, sorry. You've won one. Yeah, we'll see what happens this Saturday. We will. Okay, we'll, we'll come back after Saturday then, yeah? <laughs> yeah, we will. All right, I think that's enough for now. Um, thanks for tuning in and drop us a comment and let us know what you think.